Welcome to the Design Master HVAC video tutorial series. This series will show you how to start a new project, use alignment points in your drawings, define your building and perform load calculations, create and manage diffusers, insert and modify ductwork, and perform advanced ductwork techniques. If you'd like to follow along, links to the written tutorial and project files can be found at the bottom of this page. This video covers basic ductwork. Topics include inserting ducts, connecting ducts to diffusers, performing ductwork calculations, ductwork sizing, and modifying fittings. Let's get started. To begin inserting ducts on the drawing, use the insert duct command. Specify a point inside the HVAC chase. We could start drawing horizontal ducts, but this first section needs to be vertical. Type V at the command line to insert a vertical duct. This dialog box allows you to configure various settings for the duct, which we'll cover in more detail later. For now, set the starting elevation to 13-6 and ending elevation to 11. Then press the OK button to continue inserting ducts. When you reach the end of a run, type N at the command line to start a new run. If the starting point you select connects to an existing duct, the settings for that duct will be used. Starting a run in the middle of an existing duct will insert a break in that duct. Once your drawing looks like this, you can use the diffuser connections commands to connect the diffusers to the ductwork. We'll start with the end connection command. Select the kitchen diffuser and the nearest duct. The connection will be drawn straight from the end of the duct. Do the same for the diffuser in the stairwell. Next, we'll use the single 90 connection command. Select a diffuser and where you want the connection inserted on the duct. The connection will be drawn perpendicular to the duct and, if needed, Make a 45 degree turn to meet the diffuser. You can do this quickly for several diffusers and a single duct using the perpendicular connection command. Select the diffusers, then the duct, and the connections will be drawn for you. With the ductwork drawn and connected to the diffusers, we can now size the ducts using the ductwork calculations command. Here, you can select the range of the calculation and which calculations are performed. The first will calculate the airflow without sizing any ductwork. The second calculates airflow and sizes the selected ductwork. The third also calculates pressure drop, which we'll cover in part 5. Select ducts in a system and press the Calculate CFM and Size Ducts button. Select any duct in the system to perform the calculation. Double lines will be drawn to reflect the size of each duct, diffuser connections, and fittings. If changes are made to the diffusers, the calculation must be updated. Run the Query Diffuser command and select the kitchen diffuser. Set the callout to CD2 and CFM to 300. Then close the dialog box. Run the ductwork calculations command again. Press the calculate CFM and size ducts button and select the duct. The ductwork will be resized to accommodate the new airflow. To make changes to a single duct, use the Query Duct command. Select the vertical duct. 
Aside from the section dealing with airflow, this dialog box is almost identical to the one we saw while inserting this duct earlier. Both dialog boxes can be used to set the elevation, size and shape, type of airflow and graphics, and more. The size and criteria section allows you to configure how the duct is sized during calculations. Rather than sizing to maintain pressure drop, let's size the duct work to maintain velocity at a maximum of 1200. Press the OK button and run the ductwork calculations command again to see how the ductwork changes. Query the vertical duct again. Set the maximum depth to 14 and the sizing criteria shapes to square to rectangular. This means that the duct will be sized as a square as long as its depth does not exceed 14 inches. If the duct needs to be made larger, a rectangular shape will be used. Close the dialog box and perform the calculation again to see how the duct work changes. This duct run uses many different sizes and transitions. We can simplify the run using the Edit Multiple Ducts command. Select these ducts. If we set Same as Previous to Yes, all of the settings, including size and shape, will be the same as the previous duct in the system. Press the OK button, and the ducts will change automatically to match the last duct that was not set to same as previous. You can also lock in certain values to keep them from changing during calculations. Run the query duct command and query this duct. Set the width to 18 and check the lockbox. Then set the sizing method to constant velocity and the maximum to 1500. Press the Recalculate Size button. This will only recalculate the selected duct without affecting the rest of the system. Notice how the width is still 18, but the depth value has changed. When you close the dialog box, the double line will update and the center line changes to show that the width is locked for this duct. Elbows, transitions, tees, and other fittings can be changed using the fittings commands. We'll start with the radius elbow command. Select the square elbow in the ductwork. You'll be asked to enter a radius for the elbow. We'll press the OK button to use the default radius and the double line will change. Next, we'll use the conical T command. Select this T in the concession area. When making changes to ductwork, if the point you select on the drawing has multiple ducts nearby, you may be asked to specify which duct you want to select. For this, any of the ducts listed will work. Press the OK button and the double line will change. If you want to reset a fitting to what was assigned during the calculation and duct sizing, use the Reset to Automatic Fitting command. Select the T we just changed, and it will return to its original fitting. This concludes Part 4 of the HVAC video tutorial series. In the next video, we'll cover advanced ductwork techniques.